1946. Programs were broadcast for just two hours a day. Televisions cost the equivalent of 3,000 pounds. There were only 400 in existence. Watching was a very special event. Hello, everyone. This is Elizabeth Cowell introducing a BBC television service program from Alexander Palace. This afternoon, our program includes a marionette show, newsreel, and banning. We open with a BBC television orchestra conducted by Hyam Greenbaum. We set out too early uh, and um, tally everything away and then get excited about what we were going to see. <laughs> in my mind was the um, show me and my girl. I mean I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. Here we are in the infancy of television with an outside broadcast. The whole show from start to finish. It was an absolute miracle. <laughs> end of the show, we had neighbours in with us to watch it, and um, spontaneously we all got up and danced, the neighbours and my father and the children. Dusts were suspended for the war. The only thing on television then was a dust cloth and perhaps a gas mask. Programs came back on the air in 1946, and public interest in television started to rise. Now, manufacturers tried to tempt ordinary people by making cheaper sets. It was a boom time for the men that repaired them. Gerald Wells started out repairing televisions in the 40s. In those days, most brand new sets straight from the factory needed expert attention before delivery to the customer. No way could you get the open the cardboard box and expect the set to work. You certainly couldn't take it to the customer's house, unpack it, plug it in and expect it to work because it wouldn't. The first thing you had to do was unwrap it very carefully, put it on your service bench, and line the set up, make it work. You had line hold, frame hold, that's vertical and horizontal adjustment. You had focus, you had height, line linearity, frame linearity, just to get one channel. Then you put it back in its box. Then you take it round to the customer and set it up. Now you've got a television set, now everybody came to see you. you you'd gain status. <laughs> A whole new social etiquette evolved, particularly for children. The days of good queen birth. The manufacturers couldn't make the demand. Everybody wanted it. I don't know where they found the money from, but they did. I gathered up all the second-hand TVs, as many as I could before the coronation, put them all in order, and got them ready for sale, selling them at about £25 each. In fact, we sold the final set at six o'clock in the morning when somebody knocked on my door while I was still in bed and sold a nine-inch portable television from the bedside. Over 20 million people in Britain watched the coronation on television. We were a big build up of excitement, and uh, anybody who had a television, uh, of course, was going to invite in friends and neighbours. The Queen's crowning is come. I didn't see the coronation. I was charging around, making sets work, which we'd sold, that had what we called bounced on us. Uh, I didn't see the coronation myself, and saw little fleeting glimpses of it. House full, oh yeah, house full, standing room only. He was a fabulous individual. When that set went wrong, oh dear, what a tragedy. It was like a death in the family. I'd drive along in my little van, 
and I came round the top of the road, a cheer would go up from all these people out on the road. I'd come to fix the television. And I'd dash indoors and I'd get out my tools and I, I'd somehow make the set work. And they say, how much is it going to be? And I said, oh, it's going to cost you uh, 35 shillings. I said, oh, we haven't got that. Hang on. And I started to go charging up the road and they break up that 35 shillings. And they paid me and they'd all disappear and watch the television and I'd drive off. I don't feel there! Uh, that made me feel terribly important. Uh, it was a wonderful feeling being a television man in those days. You you treated the same respect as a doctor was treated. You'd put right the friend of a family which was ill.